Hi, my dear brothers and sisters. This is Bobby Kitain, and uh, I will be speaking to you on this topic. How do I go back to God? Allow me to begin with a short illustration. Tingnan niyo po itong dalawang kamay ko. Imagine niyo po na ito po ang kingdom of God at ito naman ang kingdom of man. There was a time when the kingdom of God and the kingdom of man were together. Until something happened. Nagkaroon po ng gap. There's this big chasm in between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of man. What is this big gap in between? It's called sin. Nung magkasala ang tao through Adam and Eve, when they, when they sinned, there was now this big gap between God and man such that no matter what man would do, no matter what man does, he or she could never return to God. On your screen, ito po yung illustration. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of man. Sin separated us from God. Kahit gaano ka kabait, kahit, kahit ilang bes ka humingi ng tawad sa Diyos, hindi ka makakabalik sa Diyos. Why? Because of original sin, heaven's doors were forever closed. But God never gave up on us. More than 2,000 years ago, God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. And by His death on the cross, we now have a bridge back to God. We can now go back to God. Now, some people might say, great, great. Therefore, everything is done. Okay na lahat. No. There's still something that we need to do. And what is that? We still have to cross the bridge. But the question is this. How do we cross the bridge back to God? And the answer? Repentance and faith. In Mark 1, 14 to 15, it says, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Now, the last sentence there, repent and believe the good news, can be translated into repentance and faith. In other words, to be able to cross the bridge, who is Jesus, back to the Father. What we need to do is repentance and faith. In this talk, brothers and sisters, that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about, in the first part of the talk, repentance. In the second part of the talk, faith. Let me first talk about repentance. There are many notions of what repentance means, but not all of them are correct. Before I tell you what repentance is all about, let me share with you first three of the most common misconceptions, mga maling akala tungkol sa repentance. First, repentance is feeling sorry or regretful about something we did or did not do. It's the feeling of being regretful na may ginawa kang mali. Um, naalala ko when I was a little boy, uh, meron akong younger brother, five years younger than me. And dahil mas malaki ako sa kanya, I would often bully him. No? Uh, I tease him, dahil ko siyang pinapaiyak. Finally, nahuli ako ng tatay ko at pinagalitan ako ng magulang ko. I felt sorry, I felt regretful, but not because I hurt my brother. I felt sorry and regretful because I got caught. I felt sorry and regretful because my parents scolded me. Many people today think that that is already repentance. You know, for instance, uh, um, isang lalaki na nahuli na ng aliwa ng misis niya, for instance. He feels sorry, but not so much because he hurt his wife. He felt sorry because he was caught. Minsan ganun yung concept, ganun yung pananaw natin tungkol sa repentance. But brothers and sisters, Repentance is more than feeling sorry about yourself. Second misconception. Feeling rotten about yourself whenever you do something wrong. <laughs> Naalala ko po, nung, dahil nga po ako isang makulit na bata, uh, yung lola ko po nung mga panahon na yun, sabi sa, sabi sa tatay ko, pakumpirmahan mo na yung anak mo kasi nasa pia na yun ang masamang espiritu. <laughs> And believe me, brothers and sisters, at a very young age, nakumpirmahan po ako sa Catholic Church. Nung panahon na yun, pwede pa. Ngayon, bawal na. But at that time, 
At a very young age, bata pa ako, nakumpirmahan na ako. Kasi nga daw, nasa pian ako naman sa mga espiritu. You know, when I heard that story, I really felt bad about myself. I felt rotten about myself. Ang sama-sama ako pala. Some people think of repentance that way. Na just feeling rotten about yourself. Feeling helpless and hopeless and in despair. Because you think that you are such a bad, bad, terrible person. But repentance is more than that. The third misconception of repentance is needing to get rid of the desire to do wrong things. If that is your definition of repentance, then you will never be able to repent. Bakit? Because for as long as you are alive, for as long as there is breath in you, you will always have that tendency to do bad things. You will always have the desire to do bad things. Why? Because of our fallen nature, because of the flesh. Because whether we like it or not, sin has entered the world. And because of that, because of flesh, because of our flesh, because of our fallen nature, there's always the tendency to desire to do wrong things. But just because you have a desire to do wrong things doesn't mean you already sin. If you act on that desire, then you sin. But just because you have that, that, that desire to do wrong things and to do bad doesn't mean you already sin. And therefore, repentance is more than having that desire or, or, or losing that desire to do wrong things. Repentance is more than that. So what is repentance, brothers and sisters? Repentance is a change of direction. It is a decision to turn away from evil, sin, wrongdoing, and running your own life, a turning to a life of obedience to God and having Jesus on the throne of your life. It's like a U-turn. You can see it on your screens right now. It's a U-turn. Parabang, you're going on one direction and suddenly you make the turn, 180 degree turn, back to God. That is repentance. It's making that decision. Again, if you recall the misconceptions, they were all about feelings. Feeling rotten about yourself, feeling bad that you did wrong, needing to get rid of the desire to do wrong things. Repentance is more than just emotions. Repentance is a decision. It's a decision to turn away from what is wrong, to turn to what is good, to turn to God and to live your life for God. It's a decision to put God at the center of your life. It's a decision to make God the number one priority of your life. It's a decision to put God on the throne of your life. In a sense, brothers and sisters, repentance is a decision to turn away from sin and to turn over your life to God. That is repentance. It's a decision, not just an emotion. Ito isang pagdidesisyon na simula ngayon, tatalikuran ko na ang makasalanan kong buhay at mabumuhay ako ng kaaya-aya sa pananaw ng Diyos. That's what repentance really mean. Again, being feeling rotten about yourself, feeling bad about yourself, it's part of repentance but it doesn't stop there. It must ripen into a decision to make God the center of your life and to turn away from sin as best as you can. What are some sins that we need to repent from? Sexual sins. We believe that sex is sacred. And sex is, is supposed to be done only in the context of marriage where God's blessing is present. So premarital sex, necking, petting, masturbation, homosexual acts, pornography. Again, let me just go back to homosexual acts. Um, it's the act of engaging in sexual activity with, with a person of the same sex that is a sin. Having that desire for a person of the same sex, um, being attracted to a person of the same sex, or even being effeminate in the way you, you walk or the way you talk, they are not sins. It's that act, that sexual act of being with, with somebody uh, sexually uh, of the same sex. 
pornography. Pornography in, in, the, in the Bible, it says that if you look at a woman who is not your wife lustfully, you already committed adultery with her. And therefore, sexual sins are sins that we should ab avoid from. Horoscope, huh? Brother Bob, horoscope? Alam nyo kung, kung kagaya nyo ako nung bata ako, gusto gusto kong basahin yan sa dyaryo. Yung, yung ano, ano kaya ang sasabihin ng horoscope ko today? Why is it such a sin? Well, if you do it only for fun, then that's fine. But if you start patterning your life or basing your decisions on what your horoscope of the day says, then you make it in the level of your God. Suddenly, it starts dictating on your life. Ganon din ang superstition. Okay, wag dyan, wag tayo dyan tumayo ng bahay. Dito tayo magtayo ng bahay kasi based on, based on my feng shui, based on superstition, dito dapat. Again, you are making it the God of your life because it starts dictating your decisions. Spiritualism, spirit of the glass, um, witchcraft, all these things. Uh, every time you enter into the spiritual realm and you try to, and you allow these uh, spirits to start dictating on your own decisions, then it becomes sin. Abuse of alcohol and drugs, again, Keyword is abuse. For us Catholics, we believe that drinking alcohol is okay. Even, even priests, they drink wine during the Mass. But it's the abuse of it. If you, if you drink so much of it and you drink habitually, then it can ripen into an addiction and then it really can become a sin. The same thing with drugs. It's okay to, it's okay actually to, to to take in prescribed drugs like, you know, paracetamol, you know, uh, cough syrup, all these things. If you need to be treated and the doctor allowed you to have it. But what we're talking about here are the dangerous drugs. <laughs> Those drugs that are prohibited, the prohibited drugs. If you use them, if you use them and you abuse them, then it is also a sin. Stealing. Self-explanatory, <laughs> cheating, lying, bribery. It's all about being honest. Cursing. Huh? Pag mumura, kasalanan pala yun, Bob? Ano lang naman, expression lang naman yun. Yes, but it's in scriptures that says, don't use the same tongue to praise God and the same tongue to curse others. Slander. Paninirang puri. Gossip. Chismis. Sins of the tongue. Again, it has something to do with honesty. And even taking part in non-Christian practices. New age, uh, all these other things that, that lure you away from the truths about God. When they become the, the, the one that dictates your life instead of the God whom we know, the God who loves you, then it is a sin. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Bob, why should I say no to those sins? Is it because the Bible says so? Yes and no. Yes, because the Bible says that we should avoid these sins. But, 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 brothers and sisters, remember this. The reason why God doesn't want us to sin, that is the more important question. Why, does, why is God telling us not to do these things? Those, the, the list on your screen right now. Why is God telling us not to do those things? And the answer is this. Because sin destroys us. Sin destroys us. And God loves us so much that he doesn't want us to be destroyed by sin. Take for instance uh, this story. Uh, meron daw isang, uh, alam nyo ba kung paano daw nila hinuhuli yung mga polar bears? You know what they would do? They would get this, uh, this dagger and then they would um, babalutin nila ng dugo ng, ng, ng baboy o ng, ng goat yung, yung, yung blade ng dagger tapos ba, ibabao nila sa, sa snow naka, nakalabas yung blade. So ito na yung bear. No? Tago natin sa pangalang Yogi. <laughs> Itong si Yogi bear. Naamoy niya ngayon yung dugo. Mahilig sa dugo yung bear. Eh, no? So hinahanap niya ngayon yung saan ba yung dugo na yan? And finally, pag nakita na niya, he would start eating the, the, the blade, not knowing it's a blade. And because he was eating blade, 
nasusugat yung bibig niya, more blood comes out and he becomes more excited and he keeps eating it and eating it until slumps on the ground and dies. Why? He didn't know he was sucking his own blood. Brothers and sisters, ganun po ang kasalanan. Sa umpisa masarap. Sa umpisa exciting. Pero as you keep doing it, as you keep doing it, you will wake up one day spiritually dead, empty, lonely, sad, destroyed. It will affect many things in your life, your relationships, the people you love, your health even. Sin destroys us. And God loves us so much that He doesn't want us to sin. He doesn't want to see us destroyed by sin. And that's why God is telling us to avoid sin. So how? What must we do to repent? Number one, be honest. Be honest. Call a sin, sin. Yung kasalanan yan, let's not sugarcoat it. You know what sugarcoat means? Para bang, let's say, nakakita ka na ng tae ng kalabaw, o pag binalot mo yan ng icing, parang ano, parang cake, ano? <laughs> Pero sa loob niyan, it's still dumb. What's my point? Minsan, we try to sugarcoat sin with nice words. For instance, um, adultery, uh, we cover it up by saying, ah, it's uh, we're just living, we're just, uh, you know, we have a happy compromise. Mm-hmm. Or maybe uh, if you are living together without the, the benefit of marriage, what do you say? Ah, we are just living in, you know, we're trying it out. Naalala ko po dati yung, yung, yung studyante po ako. Pag uh, nag-cheat kami sa class, anong tawag namin doon? Hindi cheating. Ang tawag namin doon, sharing. <laughs> Di ba? Di mag-share ka naman dyan. Napakadamot mo naman, ganyan. Dati naalala ko rin, no? may kaibigan ako pag uwi niya sa dorm. Talagang lasing na lasing. Talagang, you know, ganun siya. So, he was such a wreck. So sabi namin sa kanya, oh pare, lasing ka na naman. Eh pare, hindi ito lasing. I'm just loosening up. Okay? Loosened up talaga yung polo shirt niyang ganyan. Ano? Brothers and sisters, the first thing we need to do if we are to repent is to acknowledge if there is sin in our lives. Kung may kasalanan sa buhay natin, huwag nating itago. Huwag nating kulayan. Huwag nating pagandahin. Let's call a sin, sin. Let's be honest. Second, be humble. Let's recognize that we could not change on our own. Yes, hindi natin kakayaning magbago on our, by ourselves. Sometimes our pride prevents us from asking help. Asking help from God, asking help from others. Let's be humble enough to say, Lord, I cannot do this on my own. I need you. Remember the greatest sin of the devil is pride. I believe, I believe God would be willing to forgive Satan if Satan was willing to humble himself and ask forgiveness. But he couldn't. And therefore, we need to humble ourselves as well. To come before God and say, Lord, I sinned against you. I need your help. Remember the prodigal son? When he came home to his father, what were his words? Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Treat me as one of your hard servants. It was an act of humility. And because of that, the father's heart was so moved that the father embraced him, placed on him the best robe and the best sandals, a ring on his finger, and they, they slaughtered the fattened calf. Brothers and sisters, God's heart is moved when we humble ourselves before him. Third, renounce sin. Uh, mas gusto ko po yung term natin sa Filipino. Pandirian natin ang kasalanan. Let's renounce sin. Let's turn away from sin. Let's say, I don't want to have anything to do with you in my life. Not even a small sin in my life. Uh, I'm not just talking here of the big sins, brothers and sisters. I'm talking here even of the little sins that we commit. Let's renounce sin in our lives. Let's turn away from sin and live our lives for God. Number four, go to confession. If you're a Catholic, avail of the sacrament of reconciliation. Brothers and sisters, if you are Catholic, 
you have to realize how blessed you are because we have the sacraments, especially the sacrament of reconciliation. I remember going through this seminar many years ago. At sabi sa amin, uy, mag-confess kayo. And matagal na po ako nung panahon na yun na hindi nagko-confess. Naalala ko pa po nung pumunta po ako sa confessional box, I got, um, I have a list of all my sins. And I remember, uh, nakaupo ako sa confessional box, merong cover sa harap ko, the priest was right behind. And I, I enumerated all my sins. And the priest, he said to me, my son, your sins are forgiven. You know when he said that, I just felt that it was God speaking to me. And I will never forget that because I began to cry. And I remember leaving the confessional, uh, teary-eyed, because I just knew that the voice I heard wasn't the voice of the priest. It was the voice of God giving me a fresh start and a clean slate. Avail the sacrament of confession. Remember, the sacrament of confession is not only a chance for you to start again. It's also a chance for you to receive God's grace, to begin strong again, to overcome your sin. Okay, now let's go to faith. Talked about repentance, last part of the talk. What is faith? Faith comes from the Greek word pistis, which means the act of giving one's trust. Pathome, which means to believe in trust in and trust oneself. How many of you here believe in God? Oh, yeah. But there's a big difference between believing in God and trusting in Him. Do you know the difference, brothers and sisters? Let me tell you a, a, an, an anecdote, a story. Meron nang isang tightrope walker umakyat sa mataas na building. Tapos, uh, tinawag niya yung mga tao, marami nilang nanonood sa kanya. So sabi niya, ay, makinig kayo, tatawid ako mula sa building na to, punta sa kabilang building na to, just walking on this wire. Ang kalim, palakpakan yung mga tao. So, tumawid siya ngayon, naglakad siya ngayon. Nakarating sa kabila, palakpakan yung mga tao. Tinanong niya sila, bilib ba kayo? Bilib kami, bilib kayo, bilib kami. Oh, kumuha ngayon ng bisikleta. Tumawid pabalik sa kabila. Palakpakan naman yung mga tao. Ang galing mo. Sabi niya, bilib kayo, bilib kami, bilib kayo, bilib kami. O sige, kailangan ng volunteer. Sasakay sa likod ko, sasakay ako sa bisikleta, tatawid ako sa kabila. Volunteer! Bahala ka sa buhay mo. <laughs> Isa-isa pong nag-alisan. Isa-isa pong silang nag-alisan. Bakit? Bilib sila sa kanya, but they don't have enough trust to put their lives in your hands. The kind of faith that God asks of us, brothers and sisters, is not just the, the kind of faith that says, Believe ako sa'yo, Lord. Ang galing-galing mo, Lord. But it's the kind of faith that really tells you to entrust your whole life to God. To entrust your past, your present, and your future to Him. It's entrusting your life in the hands of a loving and a good God. That's what faith is all about. Pretty much like what happened to Peter. If you recall the story of Peter and the apostles in the boat one night, malakas po yung bagyo, sa gitna sila ng lawa, and suddenly they see this person walking on the water. They thought it was a ghost. They didn't realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus started walking on the water, not in the water, on the water, naglakad sa tubig si Jesus. Siyempre, natakot po sila. And what did Peter say? Lord, if it's you, tell me to step out of the boat and let me walk on water. What did Jesus say? Come. Naku, come na. <laughs> Yan, ano? Kala ni Peter siguro, hindi, hindi ko call ni Lord yung bluff niya. Come, sabi ni Lord. Mga apostles, go Peter, go Peter. So Peter, kinakabahan, remember, Peter was a fisherman and he knew that that part of the lake that part of the lake is a place where you don't walk on water. We are going to sink. Alam niyang malalim sa parte ng lawa na yon. But Peter heard Jesus say come out. So Peter in faith stepped out of the boat and to his surprise there was solid ground beneath the waves and he started walking on the water towards Jesus. 
By this time, probably the apostles were cheering him on. And probably Jesus was looking at him with pride. But then something happened. Nabasa siguro si Peter nung tubig. Nakita niya suddenly. Ang lakas-lakas pala ng hangin. And then he suddenly began to sink. And he started to cry out, Lord, save me. And Jesus went up to, went to him, grabbed his hand, brought him back into the boat and said, Oh, you man of little faith, why did you doubt? Bakit po nalunod si Peter? Ang ganda na sana, you know, naglakad na sa tubig. Bakit po ba siya nalunod? My theory was because it was because of his eyes. Huh, Bob? What's wrong with his eyes? He took it off Jesus. Nung naglalakad siya, nakatingin siya kay Jesus, pero nung nabasa siya ng tubig, nung nakita niya yung malakas na hangin, suddenly he took his eyes off the Lord. And, 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 and suddenly, the storm became bigger than his God. And he started to sink. Brothers and sisters, hindi ba ganun din tayo minsan? We have a good faith. We have a strong faith. We're looking at the Lord. We're looking at God. But then, suddenly, nakita natin yung mga pagsubok natin sa buhay and suddenly our challenges and our difficulties, our storms, they become bigger than our God. We lose sight of the Lord and we begin to sink. Brothers and sisters, the good news is this. When we do sink, trust that the Lord will stretch out His hand and lift you up. The promise of the Lord is this, that if we entrust our lives to Him, if we hold on to Him, if we continue to give ourselves to Him and honor Him with our lives, God will take care of us. He will not promise us smooth sailing. There will be storms along the way, but He will take care of us. He will reach out His hand and lift us up, rescue us, bring salvation into our lives. Acts 16.31, the promise of the Lord is this. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That is God's promise to all of us. So how do you go back to God? Through repentance and faith. Turning away from sin, repentance. Turning over your life to God, faith. Let me end, brothers and sisters. There was a story about Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, when he was a little boy, he said that he actually stole something from his father. Nangupit siya sa tatay niya. And he felt so guilty about what he did that he decided, hindi ko kaya humingi ng tawad sa tatay ko ng face to face. Susulat ko na lang. So sinulat niya, humingi siya ng tawad sa tatay niya. Na nangupit siya ng pera sa tatay niya. He got money from his father. He stole money from his father. So the, the night came when his father was sitting Uh, on a chair in the, in the living room, the, the young Gandhi approached his father and he could not even look at his father. He stretched out the piece of paper to his father. And, and according to Gandhi, his, his eyes were closed, his head was bowed down. And he was just waiting for his father to get angry. And the next thing he heard was this. <laughs> the ripping of the paper. He looked up And you know what he saw? His father was tearing the paper that he gave him. And with tears on his father's eyes, he smiled at his son, went down on his knees and embraced his boy. And he said, son, no matter what you do, I will never ever stop loving you. That's my story also, brothers and sisters. In 1992, I was into heavy drinking. I was into womanizing. I was into a lot of violence in my life. And then I went into a retreat, a retreat similar to this Choices series. And in that retreat, I came before God and asked forgiveness. And I will never forget that night when I bowed down my, my head and I prayed. I said, God, after everything I did, will you still love me? Will you still accept me? And the next thing I felt was a very warm embrace. I looked around me, nobody was there. I knew it was God. And then I heard a very loving voice in my heart say to me, Bobby, I loved you before. I love you today. And there is nothing that you will ever do that will ever change my love for you. 
And that was my turning point in my life. That was 28 years ago. Today, I'm still not perfect. I commit a lot of sin, but I know in my heart that every time I turn to the Lord in repentance and in faith, he will receive me. He will accept me. I, have, I can always cross that bridge back to him. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing that you can confess to God that would make him love you less. And so I encourage you, turn to him in repentance and faith. Not later, not tomorrow, not when you're old, but now when you have a chance to say no to sin, to turn away from sin, and to turn over your life to him who loves you most. God bless you.